Welcome back to Chef Out of Water. I'm Alexis and I'm a chef who's always up for a challenge. That's why I've taken to the internet to decide what I should cook with today. I don't know who I'm cooking for and they don't know what I'm gonna use. So let's see what's in this box. This feels like a personal attack. You know, last time when I used a microwave, it didn't go exactly as planned per se. Oh my God. I honestly, like, I, this is a disaster. I'm really hoping to redeem myself this time and make something that I'm actually proud of. Do I at least get research this time? Nope, but I have something better. Better? Than research? Hi Alexis and Tasty, I'm Gemma Stafford, a professional chef, cookbook author, and the host of the online baking show, Bigger Boulder Baking. Now, although I'm a professionally trained chef, I do know a thing or two about cooking in the microwave. Some of my most famous recipes have been a pizza in a mug, a three layer cake in the microwave, and even a whole batch of brownies made in the microwave. Okay, these look amazing. I didn't even know that was possible. Alexis, here are some of my microwave tips to get you through this challenge successfully. Tip number one, err on the side of caution when it comes to your timing. Start out with around two to three minutes on the clock, then check in the microwave, and if you need more time after that, do shorter increments. I think that's one of the biggest takeaways from last time is I was doing really long increments and stuff was catching on fire. Tip number two, microwave on full power. Personally, I don't use any of the settings on my microwave. If you follow tip number one, you'll be more in control of the time and less likely to set the place on fire. I feel really comforted that Gemma doesn't use different voltages. It feels kind of intimidating to me, and if she doesn't, I don't need to do it either. Okay, tip number three, Alexis, stay close to the microwave when it's on. I watched your previous challenge and you went all the way around the kitchen. When you put something in there, stay close by so you can keep an eye on it and you're less likely to have anything go wrong. Okay, I think this is just a good tip for being in the kitchen. I should know better. Alexis, I wish you the very best of luck and don't burn the place down. She seems to believe in me. I have a second shot. I think I can do this. Instead of a traditional three course meal, I'm gonna do three different brunch items. Three course brunch, one surprise taste tester, and one microwave. Let's see if I can do this. I'm going to start off with a quiche. How bad can it go? I'm gonna try to make a crust for the quiche. I know there's a lot of like crustless quiche in a microwave, but Again, I wanna to try to elevate this. I wanna to try to make it a little more advanced. Last time I did burn the crust of my lemon bars, might have caught on fire, but I'm gonna to listen to Gemma's advice and go really slowly. This is gonna be a really standard crust. Got my flour, pinch of salt, stir it all around, easy. It's really important that the butter stays cold. Again, cold dairy equals a flaky crust. Once the butter's all in, then you can start using your hands to start breaking it apart. I'm using ice water. You could also use apple cider vinegar. Some people use vodka. It just helps make the dough a bit more tender. So I'm just gonna shape these into two discs, wrap them in plastic wrap. They should chill for about an hour, especially because it's so hot in here. I want the dough to be firm so it can roll out to the fridge. So I've got one of my chilled dough discs. Ooh, she's tender, wow. See those pads of butter? That means super flaky. I love butter, yes I do. I love butter, how about you? <laughs> Another very cool trick, if you wanna transport your dough, you can just roll it like this. Oh my God, look how cool this is. And then you can just put it right back on and go like that, Voila, magic. So my dough feels really soft right now just because it's getting so hot from the light. So I'm actually gonna just chill it for maybe five minutes. While my crust chills, I'm going to cook off some bacon. Five minutes with a paper towel. But also, Gemma said to not do anything more than two minutes. So I'm gonna do two minutes and then increments after that. Look at me learn. That was seven minutes. Honestly, it looks good. There's still a few parts that aren't super crispy, but it's gonna be baked again in the quiche, so I think it's fine. It's pretty good. So much less rubbery than last time. So I've just got some eggs here. I'm gonna beat the eggs with some milk, heavy cream. Gonna add a pinch of salt, cheese, bacon. If I was making this quiche at home, I would be doing everything exactly the same up until this point. Par baking is when you bake a crust 
by itself first, put parchment paper down, and then put something like beans, some people use pie weights. You wanna make sure that the pie weights are smoothed in an even layer, otherwise um, you're gonna get some burning underneath. I'm gonna start with two minutes. Goodbye. God, I hope this works. I think we're filming on the hottest week of summer. It's certainly a heat wave right now, and there's no AC in this room. You're welcome. I've been doing this for about 15 minutes. Hmm. Okay, the edges are pretty pale, but the center is getting brown. The edges of the crust definitely need more time, but I think I just have to put the eggs in and see what happens. Otherwise, the bottom's gonna be scorched, so. I mean, this looks great. Really, really, really want this to work. I'm not gonna walk away. I'm gonna just sit right here with this hot microwave and babysit my quiche. Okay, let's take a look at this. <laughs> uh, this is very weird. It smells great. The quiche needs more time. The crust is still pretty pale. Back in it goes. Okay. I'm just gonna try it. I'm gonna open it. It's pretty weird, but... I just, the crust is like not cooked. I'm gonna let it come to room temperature. I'm gonna try a slice. If it needs to be cooked more, I will reevaluate. Moving on. I'm going to make super fluffy banana chocolate chip pancakes. I actually developed this recipe for Tasty 101. They're legitimately the best pancakes I've ever had, but I've never made them in a microwave, so we'll see. So I've got some flour, a few tablespoons of sugar, a pinch of salt, baking powder, and baking soda. I've got my milk, melted butter. I also separated the yolks and the whites for the eggs. It helps them be really fluffy. With pancake batter, you actually wanna leave it on the clumpier side and actually see some pockets of flour. It's gonna help it make it really fluffy. Then add the egg whites. You just wanna stir until the egg whites are just combined. I'm gonna do a test without the banana and chocolate chips um, first because I don't know how long this cooks and I don't wanna be wasteful. I'm gonna spray down a microwave safe plate and then add some lumpy batter. The pancakes have spread all over the plate so I think I need to use a smaller plate or I need to use something that can be like a, um, like a mold, a mold for the pancake. There's literally no one on the planet who wants to eat this. Hmm. It's not that bad. Wow, okay, okay, okay. So I got a few different vessels. I thought it could be fun to try in a ramekin first and put a little scoop of batter in. Also gonna do two minutes straight off. Huh. Okay, to me this looks kind of like a little cake more so than a pancake. Let me just see if this one with the lips will help. Okay, doesn't look beautiful, but that's okay. Don't judge a book by its character. Don't judge a book by its character cover. <laughs> oh. Yes, the heat is getting to me. Honestly, I think it's as good as it's gonna get. I wanna serve them with some fruit, some syrup on the side. I think if there's a few of them, it'll make them a bit more appealing. Voila. They're not totally browned, they're not really fluffy, but it's pretty cute. I think I'm ready to move on to my final course. So far, things are going pretty well. I think my confidence is at a seven. Solid seven. For my final course, I'm going to try to make Eggs Benedict. Traditionally, Eggs Benedict is over Canadian bacon on an English muffin, poached egg on top. I don't really like Canadian bacon, so I'm gonna use prosciutto. Sorry, Canada. I'm gonna cook it just the same way I did the bacon. It's already cured, it doesn't need to be cooked. I just thought it'd be nice to get some like crispiness. Two minutes. Crispy prosciutto. Wow. That was the easiest thing I've ever done. <laughs> so I've got some eggs here. I'm gonna pour some water over it and add a little bit of acid. 30 seconds. Two minutes? A minute. A minute. I'm gonna do a minute.
Oh, <laughs> I mean, it did kind of punch. <laughs> I need to clean this up and I'm gonna try again. So that was a bust, to say the least. <laughs> I'm gonna omit the lemon juice this time and go in 30 second intervals. That feels better. Oh, okay. It's working. It's working very slowly. Look at this. Oh, poached egg. This is amazing. This is amazing. This is amazing. Okay, here's the thing. Here's the thing. It's still cooked a little too far, but I think if I do like 15 seconds and then another 15 seconds for the last egg, it'll be perfect. No lemon juice, a little less time, poached eggs are happening. This is not perfect. Look, look at that weird egg. Why did that happen? Ah, this is the problem with microwaves, inconsistency. I think I need to get a few more eggs. What in the hell is happening? I thought I just figured it out. Why is it doing this? You know what I think we need? Bigger bowls. We, I, I need bigger bowls. Maybe more water, too. And you know what? Back to the lemon juice. Please work. Okay, taking it out. Kind of looks like an egg ghost, but... This is beautiful, a little weird, but pretty good. I'm gonna do one more egg. Hopefully it works. I've been told my surprise guest is 15 minutes away, so Gonna finish this egg up, move on to the hollandaise, and get plating. So I've got my egg yolks, lemon juice, salt, pinch of cayenne, and then I'm gonna stream the melted butter in, give it a stir, pop it in the microwave. And I think 30 seconds. Hold on. Ooh. It's not the worst hollandaise I've ever had. It's fine. It's totally fine. Hollandaise on top. Woo! Damn, she thick. I'm just gonna add a few chives. Um, I don't wanna shock anyone, but a little flaky sea salt. <laughs> okay, I think we're ready for the taste test. What a weird day. It's me, Gemma Stafford from Bigger Boulder Baking. I'm here in the Tasty Kitchen to see what Alexis has come up with today. I have a feeling Alexis went pretty ambitious. What she made in the first video, I'm sure she tried to top that, and maybe she learned a thing or two, so I'm hoping it's going to be a step above. Hi! Oh. Hi! How are you? So nice to meet you. Lovely oh. to meet you. Your video was amazing. Oh, thank it was, you. I mean, more helpful than any research I could have done. I have to say, your first attempt was like really ambitious, like slash ballsy. So. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you, thank you. Yeah, but you know, you learn from your mistakes. And I'm hoping that you improved on it for today. <laughs> okay, let's, let's get started. <gasps> so for brunch oh number gosh. one, it's a bacon and gruyere quiche. Oh my gosh, I love quiche. Did you do the pastry in the microwave? I did. Oh my gosh, it's crispy. Look at that. That's amazing. You actually have layers in your pastry. That's amazing. It's Thank you. <laughs> Course two is Eggs Benedict. It's with crispy prosciutto instead oh, of Canadian bacon because lovely. I like it better. Because it's um, fancy. It's fancy. This is really good flavor. Thank you. And I have to commend you the fact that your hollandaise is pretty rocking and it didn't split. The hollandaise is a win. Yeah, no, that, that's really awesome. I think you nailed it. And the crispy prosciutto. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so the third <gasps> course oh my gosh. is chocolate chip banana pancakes. That is awesome. They're not like regular pancakes, uh -huh. obviously, but for a microwave, I feel pretty proud. Okay, you tasted these? I did. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Uh, <laughs> it is on the drier side. It's on the drier side, yeah. Your strawberries are really good. <laughs> I worked very hard on those. I think there's some things that like can't be beat. I think that's like pancakes from a griddle. Completely agree. I but mean, I have to say, you absolutely would have fooled me with these other two. Yeah. I think you killed it compared to the first video. And to here, I think you're, you're moving up in the microwave world. <laughs> moving up. <laughs> One day I'll be on your level. Oh maybe, yeah, maybe. sure, you can come oh. and be on Bigger Boulder Bacon. <laughs> but we're not gonna do the pancakes. Okay, that's fine. I think you did awesome. And you know what, you did so good. I have a little present for you. 
So oh. this is a bigger boulder baking mug specifically for making mug meals in. Okay, I could have used this like eight <laughs> hours ago. You could have done all of this, Wait, this in this mug. So See, it's a spork and it comes in the handle. So you, you mix this everything, microwave, you eat it, you're good to go. Thank you. So this is for you. Thank you so you're much. You're welcome. Mm. Oh okay, God. so I'm just gonna take this and I'm oh, gonna go. Sure. Okay. <laughs> I feel so good. I feel elated. I feel so proud of myself. This was such a wild day. There were peaks, there were valleys, but ultimately, I think I redeemed myself with the microwave. What's next? Grab that box over there. Is this another present? Blue. Okay. What am I gonna do with a blindfold? This is a safety hazard to cook blindfolded. Oh God. I think I'm ready.